just a small small walk here in the woods went to the to the forest shelter the mushroom season has pretty much now started uh, just wanted to show a curious mushroom here this is actually i don't know the english name even of this uh in finnish it's leparosku uh the latin name lactarius deliciosus deliciosus it's very delicious mushroom but actually almost only eaten i think in in finland and sweden probably also in russia goes to show like the scandinavian countries are are pretty pretty uh, how do you say uh, what's the word uh, hardcore with mushrooms <laughs> forgetting words yeah uh, this is delicious mushroom but this whole species is almost not eaten anywhere else than in finland let's check the problem with this one is that uh, it's almost always eaten by worms as is the case here so no totally wasted it, it's really too bad so few times i've been found i have found these like a massive amount and then then i collected them and prepared a dinner a great great mushroom but i i collect about 20 to 25 species of different mushrooms just wanted to show this because it's it's rather rare and kind of a peculiar okay we'll continue here great great mushroom one of the the staples of, of Finnish mushrooms, uh, Finnish mushroom culture is the chantarel. Uh, it's sold all over in supermarkets, in the in the marketplaces, or whatnot. Um, it's almost always good the season with these. Um, especially good when it's fresh so i i just tend to snap the bottom part away and then i throw it in the back i will clean them later very nice mushroom especially if you fry it with let's say cream some onions you have a like steak or fish beautiful smells like apricot it's very very nice one of the um almost saddest part of of late summer or mid summer is when the singbirds uh, stops uh, stop the singing so uh, for example here in these woods that i go through very very often it's amazing concert of birds uh, in springtime and in early summer and I don't know any place actually that I have visited in Finland that has so much Eurasian Vren uh, species. So I, I photographed that uh, in the springtime. And yeah, it's just kind of, yeah, the, the year goes on and, uh, and uh, everything always changes. But then again, then it's the mushroom season the fishing season is uh, better so yeah not complaining but it's almost like if you live so much with uh, the rhythm of the nature as i for example do uh yeah it's this kind of changes are almost always kind of felt <laughs> yeah but anyways here is uh yeah just spotted interesting species this is of the Lactarius family, and uh, I believe this is yeah, this is the the curry milk cap, and it's rather interesting mushroom. It's delicious, but the most peculiar thing with this one is that uh, well, first of all, you see, uh, hence the name Lactarius. You get see the milk coming there. It it really smells like curry. So if you will uh fry them in butter uh, your your house will will smell like indian restaurant after that like i'm not really kidding it's really intense 
and it's great mushroom like uh, just to fry on the pan and put over a bread or something like this so I, i'm not actually picking these now uh, i have a place much nearer to, to home uh, with these ones but just wanted to show <clears throat> So have been now using this Lion Steel B41 the whole day. This is one of the most, uh, or not most, how should I say it? Uh, one of the fastest reviews that I've done actually with the knife. Uh, sorry, I'll try to find a good spot here um yeah normally i do kind of testing even many months before i do the review but i i thought i'd mix things up a bit with this one um this is very interesting knife uh, i have a lot to say about this um lion steel sleipner steel kind of a d2 variant uh so i have been now like five to six hours in the woods i've been doing some feathers but toning did also some food prep uh, at my house um this is interesting knife i have to say like when i got the knife in my hand for the first time i wasn't really like, I, I didn't know what to think about this. This kind of handle, I don't have this kind of handles. It's very interesting, the the design. Um, there, there's many things that I actually like about this knife, and it uh, has been kind of a surprising. Maybe the first impression wasn't that great with this one. Like, I would have some, I don't know, many LT rights or some Bark Rivers or... Because I have this immediate feel for the knife. With this one, maybe not. But now, after the days of use, I actually, a day of use, sorry, I actually really dig this. And see this becoming one of those uh, go to overall belt knives. And let me explain why. So, um, this kind of reminds me a bit of the TRC Classic Freedom. That was the, the first knife that came to mind when I had this on my hand. Uh, you can check the review of that one. It's It has a kind of similar texture. Well, that has much more larger the, the, the texture, or bigger the texture. This is kind of fine, but very nice. Um, yeah, so um, we had to start with this one. It's kind of thick. I will put the specs on the description. I don't remember. It's a, it's a robust blade, thicker than the TRC Classic Freedom. Very nice tip. I like this uh, robust tip for lots of use. But nevertheless, it's piercing enough. I'm pretty sure that I, I could open a, a fish with this one and so forth. Um, I think the wood is, if I'm not mistaken, it's Bokote wood, saber grind, kind of very, very standard. One thing that actually was the first that I liked about this and, and the first thing that I noticed with the handle is that it has this teardrop form and this is fantastic. This is great design because I felt like I have a very nice control with this one. This contouring here, or this, how do you say, it? this this portion, like I have my finger here, that's beautiful control. First finger here, and then like this. It's a very controllable blade. But uh, so is the TRC Classic Freedom. I feel like that's also controllable, but I actually like this even more, the handle, because you have the the thickness here then and uh, so with the push cuts with continuous use uh, I see this becoming a very very good 
uh, element of the, of the handle is that you have the thickness here. So nice. Uh, many pukos have that Finnish pukos. Uh, yeah, so fantastic. And do like these. I like the the overall design very very much. Crown crowned. How do you say crowned? Uh, the, rounded the, the, the spine um, which I don't know it, it's kind of a trade-off I like LT Wright knives and they have one of the um, sharpest spines I like it it's great for scraping fantastic with with fire steel this doesn't have it won't strike the ferro rod here no way but then here is extremely sharp portion here on the back pommel. So this is yet to be seen like how comfortable it is to uh, strike the ferro rod with this one. Probably okay. Don't see any issues. You can get a good grip here. Uh, probably no problem. Um, for scraping wood, maybe not so not so good. I don't know. It, it, it's a trade-off because then again. <laughs> It's nice now when when I have the when the pump here. So yeah, so these these are those trade-offs. Um, then one thing that also I really really dig about this is that this is actually kind of lightweight. I should measure it, but uh, I feel like it's nimble. It's lightweight. Um, also the balance is right there so overall very nice um, i did some food prep uh, so i'll actually put here just some slicing of tomatoes yeah so you can do food prep with this one it, it's rather thick behind the edge so i will uh touch up the edge for sure so that is something which i will do but not too much so that's also kind of you need you need to have the balance so i want to keep this also sturdy so and one very impressive thing with this one is the sheath and i feel like lion steel has really paid a lot of attention to the overall package here for sure and this is something which i like because i uh, lots of knife manufacturers who just they concentrate on the blade and then the sheet is just some something to protect the knife and it shouldn't be like that you you have to have the the good combination the, the knife uh needs to fit well uh the well you need to have how do you say like uh, Ansi Ruusvuor, the, the famous Finnish um, book author, said nicely that they complement each other, and actually you shouldn't uh, mm, judge or you you, you, sh you shouldn't evaluate Finnish bukos without looking the sheath and the knife. So how do they uh, work together? How well is the fit, etc., etc., etc. So. I, as a Finn, I grew up with Pukos, and I have to say, Puko sheets are fantastic. So I think Finnish Pukos have maybe the best sheets in the world, to be honest. Um, but this type of bushcrafting knives, it's a bit of a challenge to, to do good sheath. This is a great sheath. I like because it's not too, it's not too thick, it's not too wide, it's actually kind of nimble. Uh, if you look like the here's the knife and here's the sheath there's not too much extra anything about the sheath so it's kind of unnoticeable on the belt there's enough friction even without the button on so i could actually carry it like this pretty amazing actually very well uh, made the leather good quality leather and then the she uh, the button I like it a lot because it's very, very well, uh, how do you say that? 
it's very tight. Yeah. Feel like with some, for example, some bark reverse have a bit loose the, the buttons. For example, my Bravo uh, 1.25 is really loose and it actually came off during one trip. I don't see this happening so so easily. And then if it would open up, this actually not going to drop anyways. Yeah, so overall, this sheath also being so nice, seems to be a very versatile blade, also not breaking the bank, which is important. Uh, I see this becoming a use knife for me, really. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of positively surprised. Yeah, the TRC Classic, for example, it's a bit, bit expensive knife. So I don't know. I, I feel like probably will use this much more. Um, yeah, and then actually we'll put here. Uh, footage of, of, of some uh, batoning and feathers. So, like an idiot I am, I accidentally deleted the footage uh, of batoning and feathers that I did um, in the forest. So, we'll have to now do it from my garden. Um, this is quite, quite sturdy knife for the size. It's plenty thick, has a really nice, robust tip. So, for a light batoning, uh, no problem, and does nice feathers. Absolutely no problem. Now some feathers. Very forgiving for feathers. Curls up really nicely. <clears throat> mm. One thing is that it's not so good with removing material. So for carving, it it does it. But if I would have here, let's say, Finnish book or Mora or LT Wright knife, uh, would be totally different, but I will actually uh, touch up the edge a bit, so I will just thin out a bit uh, behind the edge, so it will become a bit, bit better carver, but uh, still want to keep it robust enough and, like you saw, very nice feathers. Great, actually, as a, maybe as a beginner knife. I don't know. It's weird weather. Like, has been like raining, storms, sunshine, cold, hot, like a couple of days. Really, really unstable weather. Well, actually, after filming this, go into into the forest to check some. Porcinis, I think they should come right about now. Not really sure if the year is going to be great, though. They tend to be always like 
one year is good, the next year is bad. That's why always when I found them, I, I try to dry them as much as I can. So I have from next, I have from last year a massive amount still left. So, but very forgiving knife uh, for feathers, like all all sorts of angles and surfaces, and you 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 can do nice feathers. Um, yeah, yeah, but. I guess that it will definitely uh, do some review in the future with this one. I see really me using this, not going to sell this away. So interesting, interesting to, to see how this holds up, how the steel holds up, etc, uh, etc. Et so, thanks for watching. <coughs> see you later.